So let's do today's demo. Uh, and we are starting, as always, reminding our mission here, which is that we ensure that a growing number of users have an empowering and delightful experience with stacks, apps, and assets. And the way we are doing this during what we call Q1 is, uh, well, we have a bunch of things, but we have been focusing mostly in improving the wallets and uh, re-enabling DNS in our network. And so far, we are really close to, to getting there. So I'm really excited. So today, uh, on the desktop wallet, we are not going to show the new tests uh, because Karen can speak today. But there has been lots of work on improving uh, the Electron application, so updating the Electron application and adding new uh, flows to our tests. And we are going to show the new designs for, for uh, the stacking experience. So, Jasper, would you like to share? Yeah. All right. So first off, we have this new, new choice screen between your two options, pooling or stacking by yourself. And all throughout these illustrations, these lovely illustrations are by Eugenia. They are not by me. I wish I wish I could. So all credit to her. Um, we have some better descriptions of the trade-offs, essentially, between the two options. Also flip them around. And I think we should um, recommend pooling for users that have a, have a certain balance that number is, is pretty arbitrary for us to decide, but we can decide some threshold below which we think pooling would be almost always a better experience and stacking by yourself. Um, let's say I want to pool. First thing you do is add the pool address. This hasn't changed that much. Um, choose your amount. The section is new where we kind of reframed it from what we had before. It's if you choose a, a, a maximum burn height until when you want to pull, reframe it, frame it as one time. And the other is an automatic renewal. So the pool can stack recurringly for up to 12 cycles at a time. If you choose one time, you'll have to specify until when, essentially, the number of cycles. If you choose automatic renewal, you, you don't. It's up to the pool. And then you just say, uh, you have a couple of reminders here. And then you start pooling. And then this card is it's new. It's kind of an intermediate state where you have initiated, but the pool hasn't started, hasn't committed yet, it's in second yet. So you're waiting on the pool and you can cancel. And then once they have committed, it will show as active. And I mean, there will be a link to view the pool on Second Club, also to revoke permission for uh, the pool to stack your stacks. And then, real quick, the other option automatic renewal. Same, uh, waiting on the pool. Oh, it's actually, <laughs> it didn't work. But it's similar, but instead of showing um, the end date, it will say automatic renewal because the pool can renew your commitment. Now for stacking by yourself, uh, we really wanna make sure that people don't do anything that they don't fully understand with regards to stacking and mostly that they can end up with less reward slots than they anticipated. So, there really is no way we can like, control the input or anything to make sure that, that it always works and they always keep the same number of reward slots. It's more like about educating, I guess. So this is pretty copy heavy. First of all, we tell people to consider pooling instead if they're at or around the current minimum for one slot. And then I updated this a little bit because I started from what I last showed, because I started thinking through the cases where with the 
the slots toggle where it breaks down. Um, so I think this is the best option we have essentially. So um, let's say I put in 240K and the current minimum is 100K. We say, well, you, you'll get two reward slots at the current minimum and you'll have a buffer of 40K. And then let's say I remove that, then we'll show a warning telling you again that you should consider adding a buffer, just like we tell you here above. And then these things here, uh, learn how to choose the right amount, as well as this card, it will go to a guide that we've written. And this link will go to the stacking club page for the next cycle that shows the hike in the threshold and how far off we are. So you, know, you choose your cycles, enter your address, and then similarly reminders. There's an alternative where this is in a model, just you know, to put it extra in your face and then start stacking. Similar card. That's it. All right. Cool. Great work. Um, also, thank you, Karen, for all the, the work on updating Electron and the tests. It has been a lot, and I'm sure we are also happy to, to get to this point. So uh, next, we're going to talk about the web wallet. Uh, there isn't much to show around the security audit updates, uh, but we are almost through all of them. So maybe, Thomas, would you like to, to do a, an update on what's, happy, what's happening there? Sure, we're actually, um, we've wrapped up all tickets related to the security audit. Um, and we have a write-up for kind of connecting the actions we took to specific pull requests. Um, yep. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, we'll send it over and they'll be like, wow, you guys are great. <laughs> you don't have to change anything. Um, and then we'll be good to go. Cool. Right. And then the next steps are after that are reviewing the, the security fixes that we did with this authority and then after that, uh, publishing the extension to the stores. Uh, and then the other one is a guest uh, demo today, which is Alex that has worked on this on the sponsor DSX. So Alex, you can demo that. Sweet. Well, it won't be as impressive design-wise as anything else we've seen today. So I will admit that right off the bat. <laughs> but um, let me share my screen and give you a bit of context here. Um, can you see? Can you see this? Yes. NFTs on Bitcoin. Beautiful. So let me set the, the context just very briefly here. Um, sponsored transactions can be extremely important, um, specifically for like an easier user or a better user experience. If people are just getting started, just created their account, and then they have those stacks to like complete any action initially. Um, so they could, you know, either run through the whole process of acquiring some stacks and that would, you know, require them to go through potentially checks, credit card charges, and then ultimately waiting until everything is completed. So the whole flow would be broken. What can improve all of that is um, if somebody who is who is like shared or common interest could sponsor the transaction that a user might be interested in. So um, how we started this whole conversation is um, in it far away actually from user X and from the user X team. But we said that our onboarding flow is currently completely broken for developers and they have a hard time, uh, you know, understanding why there's something, you know, interesting there, uh, learning something important and so on. So we redesigned it with um, the current trend uh, for NFTs in mind. And we said basically, what if we would onboard developers through an NFT on Bitcoin messaging or flow. So they can understand that our platform allows you to create NFTs. Those are essentially on Bitcoin through the connection that we have. And then you can, um, the key aspect here is you can experience getting the NFT yourself. And then later on would ask you if you want to build your own NFT, for instance, for a developer case. So if you want to experience getting that NFT in the first place, that's already said, uh, you might create your user for the very first time. You have a stacks address, but you don't really have any like tokens or anything. So you cannot really experience getting that NFT right away. Therefore, we identified that sponsored transactions are kind of key to this whole flow. 
So um, I took it on myself and tried to figure out how we can you know, make um, sponsored transactions work. And I, I actually heavily relied on uh, Hank's help, to be honest here. I asked him what kind of changes we'd need to make in the different, um, different libraries and different projects. He outlined the different spaces that I should look into. And uh, as a result of that, we uh, had two PRs, one in the Stacks, web, well, Stacks wallet for web and one in Connect itself. Once we have those two, we can actually go through the whole flow of a sponsored transaction, which I wanted to demonstrate here. Um, so imagine you're landing on some kind of website on like Stexco and you go to developers and then it will say something like, you know, claim your first NFT or experience getting your first NFT on Bitcoin. And then you would land on some kind of an app that will be almost like minimal. So this is what you're currently seeing is really bad design. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just my very first attempt at a small app that would somehow have, you know, the, the, the core components in place. It will tell you one, um, what you're looking at is limited to 100. So you can be one of the first, let's say, 100 developers who would be able to go through this flow and claim an NFT. It's almost like a badge of honor. You know, you were one of the first developers doing that. And then uh, over here, it would show you some, you know, some tweets. Uh, ideally, those would be related to your NFT. And you can imagine how we would have like our own uh, hashtag for NFTs on Bitcoin, for instance. And people could like tweet about it and you can read up on here if you wanted to. But the real key component of this demo is, again, the sponsored transactions. So I'm already logged in here. Um, if I wouldn't be logged in uh, with my secret key, I wouldn't see the go button. I would see an authenticate button, and then I would go through the um, you know, secret, free and the, uh, the secret key flow. So once I click go, it will open up a window that I need to pull over here. Can you see this? Yep. Okay, beautiful. So the only change really uh, on the code base is this here. Uh, you can see that the fees are still there and it says sponsored now. So um, on, on the front end of things, what is happening, um, this is presented with just a sponsored attribute set to true. And if I hit confirm, it will actually not broadcast the transaction, but it will just sign a transaction and send it back to a backend. And that backend then ultimately would need to figure out, A, should I sponsor this tr transaction? So there might be attributes like, uh, is this person calling the right method? Uh, does this person already have a token? Is this like a legit thing that I should actually sponsor in the common interest? If so, um, hit confirm. And then right now, uh, what happened on the back end is the transaction was received. So the hash of the, the transaction was received. I checked if I should sponsor it. I gave it a thumbs up. I essentially created the transaction on the back end, signed it again with the sponsoring key, and essentially have this thing now. So it's a, a method call to a, a contract that I created for the NFT. And it's calling the method, uh, where is it, claim, claim swag, which essentially would give you a swag token if you don't have one yet. And as you can see here, uh, it is sponsored true and I paid no fees whatsoever. So this could be done with any new account that has no STX at all. And ultimately, what we're really trying to get developers to is to actually learn more and then create their own NFT, which would be one of the actions in here. Um, I could show you the backend, but it's pretty, like there's not crazy much happening. You really just have, um, you just received the transaction at some point, uh, you put it in the right format, you decentralize it. The decentralization object would give you some properties where you could check, for instance, is this the right method call? Is this the right, uh, the right user and all of that? Once that is done, you just hit sponsor transactions and broadcast it. It's pretty, it's that simple. Uh, the changes were, you know, not eventful, but I think the impact is uh, pretty significant to the user flow that we have with this. So um, wrapping up, this app looks horrible. I think we have a great vision with it. And I think we now have an enabler set for it to be achieved. And I'll stop sharing. Yeah, it's really awesome. cool. Yeah. yeah. I think apps are going to really um, take advantage of this. And thank you very much, Hank, for all the great support. Um, even you know, uh, share, share commits to the PRs and really helped me shepherd it along. Of course. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so last on the agenda, we have updates on BNS. So Hank, would you like to give us the latest news there? Yeah. Unfortunately, nothing really new on the demoable front. We did have a demo of BNS. Um, it might have been a week ago, it might have been two weeks ago. Um, two weeks ago. Since then, it's been really more 
backend type changes. Um, and so getting things really close on mainnet, there's a new release of the Stacks blockchain that has Atlas enabled. That was a key blocker for getting on mainnet. Um, all the Stacks blockchain API side stuff is is all set and ready. Um, so as soon as that's live, uh, which um, I'm not sure exactly when that'll be, but it's definitely looking like sometime this week, uh, we'll basically flip a switch and um, it'll be live for apps in production. Cool. Well, thank you. I think, all right. Yeah. Did Jay Wiley have a question about this? I saw. <clears throat> Uh, Jay, well, you commented on the, the DevOps ticket for deploying the registrar in particular. Did you want to ask about that to, to clarify? Yes, uh, that was a question for you and or Hank. Uh, just confirmation on which image we're pushing out. Um, I linked to the comment uh, where the question was posed. Uh, once that is answered, you know, we can definitely have it running today. Cool. Yeah, Hank, do you know by chance? I'm just looking at the fix. Yeah, I'll just link it here for <clears throat> for reference. I'll share my screen. Yeah, I mean, for, from my point of view, it would be preferable to have you know like a, a versioned 